When you're starting out with SwiftUI, it can sometimes seem a confusing mix of structures and protocols. It helps to keep an eye on what exactly is a view. A view is a protocol, and the ultimate aim for a SwiftUI view is to assign a single element conforming to view to its body property. This body property describes the content and the behavior of the view. You should already be familiar with most of the view types, such as text views, images, and buttons. We'll have a run through of some simple shapes and colors before we get onto more complicated drawing. Both color and shape conform to view, so we can assign either of these to a view's body property. Let's write some code and see how this works. In Xcode, create a new Xcode project. Create a new iOS single view app. Name the project OpenMind. And make sure that your language is Swift and your user interface is SwiftUI. Open contentview.swift. This is where you start creating your SwiftUI views. Get the preview set up in the canvas. Change the scheme to suit your preview. I'm going to use iPhone 11 and zoom out to fit the screen. Let's replace this text with a color. This is a system color and there are others, red, green, pink, purple, for example. Because color is a view, it can have all the view modifiers. This yellow is the background color. So we'll make sure that top and bottom are yellow too and ignore these safety areas. Let's embed this in a Z stack so that we can put a shape on top of the background. Command click color. And as Z stack isn't in the list, choose embed in H stack. Change H stack to Z stack and add the shape. This puts a rectangle shape on top of the background color view. Rectangle conforms to the shape protocol, which inherits from view. This means that rectangle is also a view and fills the available area. We can assign a color to this shape with a view modifier. As well as a rectangle, you can also use a few other primitive shapes, such as capsule, ellipse, and circle. Let's change this rectangle to be a circle. A lot of apps have an avatar view of a circular image with a border. So we'll work out how to do that. A circle conforms to the shape protocol, which inherits from view. So as well as the usual view modifiers, we have some extra shape modifiers, such as fill and stroke available. In other APIs, you might be used to setting both a fill and a stroke at pretty much the same time. But in SwiftUI, we define the fill and stroke views separately. In this example, you could create a stroked view and have a background view of the green circle. Or you could create the green circle and have an overlay of the stroked view. In the code, change the circle to have a stroke modifier. Order is important here. You can only add a stroke modifier to a shape. If you set a foreground color, the shape becomes a view and not a shape anymore. With SwiftUI, you're often moving lines around, so learn this shortcut key to help you. Press Command Option, left square bracket, to move a line or selection up, and Command Option, right square bracket, to move the line or selection down. Add a background modifier with a circle as the background view. Change this circle's foreground color to contrast. Notice how this stroke goes outside the edge of the screen. Stroked paths have half their width inside the shape and half outside. We can visualize this if I change the opacity of the stroke. Now you can see where the stroke lies on top of the green circle. If you want the full stroke width inside the circle, you can inset it with the inset modifier. Circle conforms to insetable shape. And using this inset modifier, we've inset by half the width of the stroke. You can also use negative values to make a border outside of the shape. 
Instead of having a plain circle, let's use a circle to clip an image. Open the Asset Catalog and find your Resources directory for this video. Drag the Birds JPG to the Asset Catalog. Back in ContentView.Swift, remove all this circle code and replace it with an image. We'll use the circle as a clip shape. Because we're using content mode fill, the image only shrinks to fill the space available to this view element in one direction. But if we change the content mode to fit, the image will fit entirely within the space available. Later on, we'll find out how to make the circle size a ratio of the width of the screen so that it will be suitable for all devices. But for now, we'll hard code a size for the circle. Let's outline this image with white. If we were to use a border, the border would outline the original shape and not the clip shape. And if I move that border to before the clip shape modifier, then the border gets clipped by the clip shape too. So we won't do that. We'll use a circle overlay instead. And now we have a circular image with a white border. And that's a broad introduction to using shapes and colors. And now we can go on to look at them in more depth.